Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 13th of November 2024. Now before getting into list of articles, I have certain announcements for you. See the first announcement is regarding our pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025. Batch 3 of this particular test series is starting on 21st November 2024 with 48 tests. You can click the link in the description and register for this test and you can get the benefit of being exam ready. The second announcement is regarding our Chakra Initiative. It is a fully current affairs based initiative which has 50 class along with 8 current affairs based prelims test. So this will help you to enhance your current affairs based knowledge that is very required for the preliminary examination. So with this note let us get into the list of articles for today's discussion. The browser for Chakra, it is in the description. You can click the browser, you can view it and register for the particular course. When we look at the list of articles for today's discussion, we have the first article regarding Central Armed Police Force. In the second article, we will be seeing about the new water rules. And in the third article, we will be seeing about earthquake and its basics. So without any delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. See recently this act has been amended in 2024 and certain rules has been made in order to implement this particular amended act. So in these rules certain acts has been decriminalized and high imposition of a penalty has been made in order to increase the compliance to this act. So this is why the particular act is in news. So from the brilliance perspective, let us revise about the provisions of this act. So let's start with how or what is the basis of this particular act. See, the parliament has made this act under article 252. So according to this article, parliament can legislate an act for two or more state by consent. So based on this article only, this particular act has been made. What are the objectives of the act? First is to prevent and control water pollution. Secondly, to restore water wholesomeness. Thirdly, to establish pollution control board. And fourthly, to assess and impose penalty for polluters. So these are the key objectives of this particular act. So this particular act, as we saw earlier, it gives legal backing for the setup of Central Pollution Control Board, State Pollution Control Board and certain joint boards. So we know about the Central Pollution Control Board, it advises the government on pollution prevention. And the State uh, Pollution Control Board, it actually plans and execute pollution control programs. And there is certain joint boards, uh, these are formed by joining the boards of certain states. So when two or more states, they come under an agreement and they make or they form a particular uh, joint board, this joint board is actually possible. So these three agencies have their legal backing from this particular act. Apart from this, these organizations, they derive certain powers from the act. Let us see them one by one. Firstly, prohibition on polluting a stream or well. See any body or any organization, if they have to set up their plant, they have to get prior consent from the board in order to use a new outlet or discharge. So this is as per section 25 of this particular act. Apart from this, the state boards, they have the power to take sample from river and they can analyze it to prevent and control water pollution. Apart from this, they can issue directions to stop any activity that release polluting matter into water bodies. And they even have the power to enter and inspect any industry if it is required. The board can even apply to the court if it has to stop the source of the pollutant and it can even take emergency measures like in case of pollution of a stream or well. So these are certain powers that has been offered under this particular act for these boards. Now let's quickly go through the provisions of the 2024 amendment. See this amendment has been made in order to make the law even more decentralized and in order to bring more compliance and enable the ease of doing business. So primarily it was applicable only to Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan and other union territories but currently it is applicable to all the states. So the penalties it will be administered by the adjudicating officers and any appeal it can be given to the NGT. 
Now, now let us see the actual difference between the two act. See, priorly the chairman of SPCB, it is nominated by the state government, but currently it will be prescribed. But currently the process of selecting the chairman of SPCB, it will be prescribed by our central government. Secondly, the consent for industries, it is mandatory from SPCB, but currently certain exceptions has been provided for certain type of industries. This is done to in order to bring in the ease of doing business. But the most important provision that you have to notice, priorly the monitoring device, if you are tampering it, there was no provision, but currently it has been given a fine of 10,000 to 15,000 lakh, which is appreciable. And in case of a discharge of pollutant, priorly there was a imprisonment plus fine, but currently there is only fine of 10,000 rupees to 15 lakh rupees. So these are the notable amendments you have to remember when it comes to this Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 2024. So with this understanding, let us see a prelims question. Let me read out the question for you. Who nominates the chairman of the State Pollution Control Board, SPCB, under the Amendment Act? 2024. So, the correct answer here is option B, central government. So, with these learned two points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article about a mild earthquake that has been recorded near Sikkim. The epicenter of this earthquake was located 16 km west of Gangtok at the depth of 5 km. So, what does this term epicenter mean? Let us understand that in this news article discussion. Actually, there has been no report of any damage to property or loss of life. So, make note of this no news as well. So, let us start with the basic terms with respect to earthquake. See, the first important term that you have to remember is this focus of the hypocenter. It is a point which is under the earth and it is where the release of energy actually happens when an earthquake actually hits. So, the point straight above the focus in the surface of the land is known as epicenter. These two terms are very important term that you have to remember. So, with this basic now, let us see about the types of waves. See, there are two types of waves. Firstly, body waves and secondly, the surface waves. These body waves, they actually happen under the ground and the surface wave, as the name itself suggests, it happens on the surface of the land. So, when we talk about the body waves, there are two types, the primary waves or the P waves and the secondary waves or S waves. So, the primary waves is the first wave that happens at the incident of an earthquake. So, as you can see here, it travels, actually it compresses at certain places, it relaxes and it, it expands and then it gets again compressed. So, this is how this P wave actually works. If you can see, this is the longitudinal wave similar to the sound waves, except that all other waves are transverse in nature and they travel parallel or they propagate parallel to the direction of propagation. So, this basic difference we have studied in our physics while we are studying 6th standard. So, this has actually asked in our UPSC preliminary examination, that is why I am explaining it. So, the longitudinal waves, it has up the moment like this, a short compression and then an expansion similar to sound waves. So, it moves parallel, this only moves actually parallel, it moves, these transverse waves, they move perpendicular in nature. So, it means if the director, direction of propagation is this way, it just moves perpendicular. So, this means that there will be a crust and there will be a trough. But here there is no such a thing, there will be only compression and expansion. Just make note of these important things that you have to remember. So, except P waves, all other or transverse waves, they propagate perpendicular to the direction of propagation. After this P waves comes the S waves, they are the most destructive in nature because the actual impact will be known through this S waves. Talking about the surface waves, while this is happening in the underground, on the surface, depending upon the seismic waves, it can be a Rayleigh wave having a moment like this or it can be a love wave having a moment like this. So, these are the types of waves and the characteristics of these waves that you have to remember when it comes to seismic waves. Now, let us see about the shadow zones. See, these P waves, they can travel through all the medium, like that is the solid as well as the liquid. When, when you take this S waves, they can travel only through solids and not liquid. So, when you take S waves, there, na there will be a naturally shadow zone 
when they hit the uh, liquid part of our inner interior of our earth so this is how a uh, s wave shadow zone actually looks but when you take a p wave shadow zone here you can see the water is refracting the rays this means that the p waves they can move through both solid and liquid but when it hits the liquid uh, the property of liquid actually diffracts this waves so here you can see the shadow waves of this p waves so both these actually help us to identify what is the interior of our earth actually composed of so make note of these as well so so far we saw about uh, basics of earthquake then we saw about uh, types of waves then we saw about the shadow zones with this understanding let us try to answer this particular question the correct answer for this question is option d 1 2 1 3 all the three statements given here are correct so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article about central industrial security force in short called as CISF now CISF is currently in news because yesterday the union home ministry has approved first all women battalion of CISF and this is actually a proposal made by our union home minister Amit Shah on the occasion of 53rd CISF day so from this news article let us revise about the central armed police forces which is very important from the prelims as well as mains perspective so let's start with CAPF or the central armed police force see it functions under ministry of home affairs in short called as MHA it totally has seven forces which includes Assam rifles border security force CASF CRPF ITBB NSG SSB and etc so each body has their unique function for example the CRPF they take care of internal security uh, BSF ITBB and uh, SSB they take care of the border security and the CISF they take care of infra infrastructure security and the NSG they take care of uh, counter terrorism and for northeastern security we have Assam rifles in short called as AR so each body will have a leader or an officer from Indian police force in short called as IPS so now let us decode each body one by one so the first one is the Assam rifle in short called as AR so it is the oldest force in our country it was started in 1835 as a Kachar levy here Kachar levy is nothing but a protection force that take care of a British settlement in that particular area in Assam so this is technically the oldest force when we take its origin into account so it actually takes care of indo myanmar border as well as the northeastern security so because of this unique feature they actually called us right arm of civil left arm of military with a nickname secondly the border security force it was established in 1965 and they take care of the border region in pakistan and bangladesh it is the largest border securing security force in the world so they are also the front line of defense when it comes to an any breach of security in border thirdly the central industrial security force in short called as cisf so it was established in 1969 and they actually protect airports nuclear plants delhi metro heritage sites and etc so they take care of all the infrastructure fourthly central reserved police force in short called as crpf see it was established in 1939 as a crown representative police see what is this crown representative police it is nothing but uh, a police that protect the princely states so only for that purpose it was created in 1939 later it its name was changed to crpf so they play very crucial role like roy control anti nexal and uh, sec election security and etc they also take care of un peacekeeping mission as well fifthly we have uh, indo tibetan border police in short called as itbp from the name itself you can easily understand it takes care of uh, india china border with a length of 3488 kilometer from jammu and kashmir to arunachal pradesh so it was established in 1962 after the sino india conflict and it even have specialized uh, workers they are trained to work in the high altitude operations as well sixthly we have the national security guard in short called as nsg it was formed in 1984 after the operation blue star and the assassination of our indira gandhi prime minister so their main purpose is to counter terrorism and to rescue the hostages they have two important units firstly the special action 
group the members will be derived from the army and the special ranger group for which the members will be derived from CAPF or the state police. So, it is a very important guard that comes into action when required. Finally, the Sastra Seema Bal. See, this was formed in 1962 after Indochina War. Later in 1963, a year after, it was renamed as the Special Service Bureau. So, it has two names, Special Service Bureau as well as the Sastra Seema Bal. In both terms, it is shortly called as SSB. So, their purpose is to guard India's border with Nepal and Bhutan. So, these are all very important central armed reserved force that you have to remember. Remember all these facts, it will be asked in mains as well as prelims. So, with this basic understanding, now let us try to solve this particular question. With reference to the central armed police force, CAPF in India, which of the following statements is or are correct? The border security force BSF guards India's border with Pakistan and Bangladesh. The Indo Tibetan border police ITBP specializes in high altitude operation along the Indo China border. The Assam Rifles is responsible for border security with Nepal and Bhutan. So, the correct answer for this particular question is option A1 and 2 only because the third statement is actually incorrect. Now, before concluding, I have another important announcement regarding our current affairs monthly marathon for October 2024. We have already posted a video. It is a fully prelim centric video in which you can get all the data that is relevant to the preliminary examination. So, we will be posting a video like this for every month in the second week. So, you can view this video and you can also tune up to the following videos that will be posted later. So, with this announcement, we came to the end of the newspaper analysis. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and do not forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.